TIF everyone, it is Friday evening and we're going to do weather for weather geeks this evening on a pretty darn inhospitable Friday evening to be outside. We've had wind, we've had rain, we've had sleet, we've had some snow. As expected, just kind of a wintry mess out there. This is uh, the second uh, consecutive powerhouse low pressure system that has tracked in this direction over the last few days. We had one earlier this week, and you know this is just not a favorable direction or storm track for us in northeast Ohio and western Pennsylvania to uh, pick up a bunch of snow. But it is a favorable direction for us to pick up a lot of wind, and that's what we've been, of course, seeing uh, with our big storms this week. Now, uh, as of 7.04, the radar locally shows you know, rain for some, and we still have some snow falling, big wet, uh, big wet uh, flakes, I should say, big bomber flakes um, over in western PA and Mercer and Lawrence counties. Small slushy accumulation still a possibility over there. We've actually had some lightning occasionally, some thunder snow, if you will, uh, around Detroit and up over Lake Erie. We even had one strike earlier on near the Crawford Mercer line. We've had a couple of lightning strikes over in uh, central PA, also over the last uh, couple of hours near uh, State College over there in Center County. Pennsylvania, a couple of lightning strikes here over the last hour or so. I've been keeping a close eye on this product. Uh, we call this, uh, it, or it's called uh, the co <laughs> correlation coefficient, easy for me to say, correlation coefficient product. And the reason why we pay particularly close attention to this um, is that this is a product that serves a couple of purposes. During severe weather season, we can use this product to uh, pick out uh, possible debris from tornadoes, debris flying around. In the winter season, it's really useful for finding precipitation type. And the reason for that is, the way this works, is the radar beam, when it goes out and hits things that are all about the same size, um, it returns kind of this smooth, I don't know what color this is, maybe magenta-ish uh, color. When it returns kind of more noise, noisier colors, a lot of yellows and things like that, that means the radar beam is hitting things that are of different sizes. So you're getting occasionally a snowflake, a sleet pellet, a raindrop, or in a tornado situation, maybe plywood and debris flying in the air. And so earlier on, we saw a lot of noisy returns with our sleet that pushed in. And now it's a fairly you know, uniform color across our area. And so we're either seeing wet snow at this point or rain. Not much in the way of sleet left out there as of 706. All right, blizzard warnings out for almost the entire state of Iowa, parts of Wisconsin and Michigan. This evening, and winter storm warnings are up in western New York ahead of uh, what should be a big time uh, lake effect event heading towards the Buffalo area as we go into tomorrow, tomorrow night, and into parts of Sunday as well. As I kind of speculated yesterday, the Weather Service Office in Cleveland did upgrade parts of their area from a wind advisory to a high wind warning. Now, this does not include the counties uh, that are included on our TV coverage area, but the Cleveland area now under a high wind warning back to Mansfield, back to Toledo as well and uh, the higher terrain east of pittsburgh also under a high wind warning top of the hour observations here in the seven o'clock hour at the airport in vienna trumbull county 48 mile per hour gust up in erie 58 you know it gets real hilly just south of erie and so anytime the wind direction is like this not only do you uh, warm the air a little bit because of the, the down sloping but down sloping off those higher uh, hills into the low terrain near the lakeshore really does uh, enhance the wind speeds a lot. So a southeasterly wind tends to be a really windy wind direction up in the uh, Erie, Pennsylvania area. The wind is going to relax just a little bit overnight, probably by midnight, one, two, three in the morning. But by tomorrow morning, it's already turning gusty again. And I think we could occasionally see a 45, 50 mile per hour gust on our Saturday. And while it's not going to be truly Arctic, the air mass just yet, that'll change on Sunday. It won't be quite as windy Sunday, but it's still going to be awfully blustery, and that's going to create some pretty nasty wind chills. Wind chills on Saturday, mostly upper single digits and teens, but once the wind chills drop below zero Sunday morning, they're probably going to stay below zero into Sunday night, into Monday morning as well as the Arctic air mass pushes into the area. Now, right ahead of our Arctic cold front, there can be some flurries and snow showers on a few occasions on Saturday. I don't think this is going to add up to much, but the ground could occasionally be coated here and there. You'll just need to be alert if you're doing some traveling and, and also hang on to the wheel with both uh, hands because of the wind on our Saturday. So just be alert, not expecting much snow, but occasionally you might run into a slick spot here and there. What is perhaps of greater concern, now not as many people are on the roads, but as our Arctic cold front pushes in, the models have uh, trended upwards with the expectations of snow showers and flurries for a handful of hours late Saturday evening and into the overnight. It's not going to be much, 
But I could see where we get a half an inch or an inch worth of snow, and with temperatures back in the 20s, every flake can stick. Um, and if you are going to be out and about, say, by 11 p.m., midnight, 1, 2 in the morning, um, you're going to have to be a little bit cautious, I think. I think some somebody might try to get an inch out of this. It's not going to be hard. It's not going to be a big ask to get an inch worth of snow out of this high-ratio fluffy snow that will accompany our Arctic cold front. Now, as we get into the daylight hours on Sunday, uh, we should be snow-free after maybe a flurry early on. We should be snow-free in our local area. But uh, the lake effect machine will definitely be cranking up in western New York. And uh, for Steelers fans, that will be all important. You know, the Bills Stadium is in the southern suburbs of Buffalo. It's about right here. And I think the lake effect is really going to crank Saturday night into Sunday morning. Now, it's possible this lake effect band will wiggle to the south in time for the start of the game on Sunday. That's a low-confidence thing. It's going to be maybe just at the south. Um, but I think they're going to pick up a lot of snow um, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening into Sunday morning. And, of course, it's going to be very windy up in Buffalo as well. So that'll be interesting watching on TV on Sunday. The other interesting NFL game, of course, this weekend, Kansas City and Miami tomorrow night. Now, snow is not going to be much of a story out there, but uh, the temperature, it's going to be one of the coldest NFL games on record. Probably not the coldest, but it's going to be in the top five or something. Uh, I think the temperature and the wind chill will be well below zero in Kansas City tomorrow evening. That game on Peacock, of course. Now, our weather as we go into next week. It's Martin Luther King Day on Monday, a federal holiday. There'll be some people that don't go to work on Monday. Uh, the schools will be off as well. It'll be a good day to hunker down indoors. It's not going to snow during the daylight hours, but it's just going to be blustery and cold. Monday night, this southern stream system is going to try to make the turn up the eastern seaboard into Tuesday. It may be kind of more like this and kind of out to sea. Either way, I don't think it's a very amplified system. It's going to be kind of a flat wave. But it's possible we're going to be on the back edge of a shield of light snow. And I could see where we might try to get an inch or two worth of snow, maybe, maybe, out of that Monday night into at least the first half of the day. Tuesday, probably the best chance of a little bit of accumulation will be in Pennsylvania. But I can't rule out a little bit of snow here. And certainly we're behind schedule. Um, we are 16 inches behind schedule for the uh, season so far. We're not going to add much to this over the coming days. You know, there's two systems next week I'm going to keep an eye on. That midweek system, which can could bring us a little bit of snow Monday night into Tuesday. And then at the end of the week, it doesn't look strong at this point, but it's possible, again, we get clipped by a little bit of snow. End of the week, Thursday, and into the day, Friday as well. So you know, I just I don't see any sort of blockbuster in this kind of a pattern. The Arctic air is too heavy and dense and in sinking too far to the south, the storm track will be too far to the south and east, I think, for any sort of big low pressure system that brings us a bunch of snow. So, you know, the, the models bear that out. You'll notice the lines don't move much Monday night into Tuesday. Our models, again, are not advertising much here locally. I think it's just possible that we get grazed. They do start trending up towards the end of next week with that, you know, graphic I showed you before this with that late week system possibly bringing us some light snow. The uh, cold air is here to stay for a good 10 days. I think the pattern starts to change once we get done with next weekend. So here's the 21st Sunday. And then after that, look at this. Now, this is just model information. It's not uh, you know, surely going to be exactly right. But uh, definitely there are trends on all the models that the last week to 10 days of January will feature a pretty nice thaw. It'll be pothole season for sure after spending 10 days below freezing. We thaw things out. You know what that means. Uh, we're going to be dodging those potholes certainly in late January and into February. Thank you for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Friday evening. Make sure you're following me on all the social media outlets. I'll have updates throughout the course of the evening tonight on 21 News at 11, anytime on the Storm Tracker 21 app, and over the weekend occasionally I'll be uh, chiming in on social media as well. Have a great weekend and stay safe.